Tennessee's Wild Side, broadcast for nearly two decades, was originally created through a vision of the Jackson Foundation. The foundation remains a supportive partner in the mission to educate viewers about wildlife, natural resources, and opportunities for outdoor adventure. Tennessee's Wild Side is produced in association with Rockwater TV. Hi friends, welcome to the Wild Side. I'm Steve Hall. It seems we've been doing a lot of horse stories lately, but Tennessee is somewhat synonymous with horses. Take for instance, the Tennessee Walker. It was the first horse breed to be named for an American state. The industry here ranks as the sixth largest with millions of acres dedicated to raising and caring for horses. And in a state where there are year round shows, competitions, charity events, and therapy programs, it's hard not to notice the powerful equine influence. There is work to do, and in Tennessee, volunteers are often the ones who do it. It's an exciting time at Wildwood Stables in Crossville. All this activity is leading up to an afternoon equine therapy session and the Standing Tall Life Skills Program. I love doing the tail. Today's schedule is specifically for children, but age is not an issue here, so workers are assigned by their willingness. Whether they have horse experience or not, we try to find a niche for them so that they can uh, be fulfilled in their volunteer duties. Fulfillment on this farm comes easily as volunteers are witness to the remarkable relationships with horses. I truly believe that they have an intuition that we do not necessarily have and they are able to pick up on emotions and through their nonverbal communication they're able to communicate uh, with the children, with the volunteers. Moon was kind of like he, nobody was grooming him right then and he was just kind of hyper and I was rubbing his nose calming him down and Moon really likes whenever people are with him or playing with him or riding him so I was just rubbing his nose and calming him down and it calmed myself down. The children that we see often have childhood trauma and so we try to replace those pictures so those negative pictures with positive experiences. I gave him a little kiss on the nose and he gave me a kiss on the nose. Surrounded by all these horses, one could assume the owners of Standing Tall are career equestrians, but they're actually retired federal prison employees. No, we were not horse people. <laughs> we leased 300 acres from Fairfield Glade Community Club. We answered a little ad in the paper. Advertising for a horse stable. And we decided that this is much like run, running a prison. We have jail breaks and, and whatnot. When we were in the prison system, it was a, a growth industry. And so we were ho hoping to help turn that tide a little bit. So here we are uh, 15 years later. And we really need to have active children growing into active adults to fulfill the needs of our community. So um, we thought, why not? Shoulders back. Stomach in, you can keep your balance. A steady and stable position begins the process of building confidence. Now every tree is unique. I like doing the yoga in the morning. It's just so fun. This is my first year being in the program. So I'm kind of new to it. Demonstrating how the horses feel offers a sense of direction. One hand tells them to turn or turn. Whoa. And assigning each child their own mentor gives them a voice. If it has dapples, that's a dapple gray. Oh, I think it is. I think it is a dapple gray. But of course it is the horses that do the real therapy. And horses can like feel the way you feel. And if you get nervous, they'll get nervous. And I've had that experience. It's okay, buddy. All these experiences are rooted in necessity. 
as John and Michelle Cannon's original reason to launch the Standing Tall program started with their own grandson. My grandson was born a preemie and he had a lot of issues, physical and later we found out emotional issues. And so when we were taking him to therapy, uh, the, the therapist suggested horse therapy. I didn't know anything about it. So at that point we started researching different programs that might help him. And um, we couldn't quite get the right program with the right people, and it just didn't uh, mesh together until about 12 years after. And so it all came together. We put the life skills with the horse part, and it, it seems to work. It's, a, it's just a fabulous way to reach children. And it's just a place where you can be yourself without any judgment. It's helped a lot. The first time I got on a horse, it was so scary. And then whenever I just did it, I did. We all have fears based on what somebody else tells us. And so particularly with a 1,200 pound animal, for these kids, it is scary to say the least. But once the horse listens to them and they begin to listen to the horse, then they gain confidences that allow them to connect with that horse because the horse doesn't judge you. The horse isn't gonna to go to school and say something behind your back. The horse is here for you and he'll teach you things. When a horse backs away, it means like, give me a minute and it's the same way with people. You were on a pretty spirited horse. Tell me about that horse. He was jumpy a little, but he, he still, I, I still love him. What's his name? Snowman. Not only is it healing for the kids, it's also healing for the volunteers to be around the horses and being in this environment. They know how many volunteers they have. They know how many children participate in the program. They know how much money comes in through donations, and they know how many horses live here. What they don't know is how far-reaching this program may actually be. After they finish, they have the opportunity to come here and to volunteer. We have uh, vo junior volunteers that help with the classes, and we also um, they also help at Wildwood in the barn and I really like the horses and I didn't want to have to miss them, so I decided to come work and I, I don't have, a, I don't really do anything on the weekends, so I thought maybe I could just come here and I really like it. And so we have that continuous interaction with the kids. We're not really sure why that bond forms, but we've watched it with the kids gaining self-confidence by being with the horses. Whenever I came here, I realized how fun riding horses and stuff was, so I kind of want to do that when I get older. Someday if I volunteer here, I would like to train the horses. This gives them a chance to thrive and understand some of the circumstances that they're faced in day-to-day -day life. And this barn has been an important part of that. It brings me great satisfaction to know that we are making a difference uh, one kid at a time. It's like a homey place, it's like a second home. That's all the reward that I need is I know that we're doing a good thing here. In Crossville, I'm Annette Noel Hall on the Wild Side. Michelle Cannon tells us in addition to all the children they've been able to help, their grandson, who now works at the stable, has made tremendous progress through equine therapy. Tennessee's Wild Side has been a presentation of the Jackson Foundation in association with Rockwater TV.